Welcome to church. I'm so glad you could join us today. I'm Ben, a part of the creative team here at Calvary. If this is your first time joining us, we'd love to get to know you and answer any questions you might have. Simply text hello to 587-323-1199 or message us on Facebook and Instagram and we'll reply right back. Thanks for joining us today. We hope you enjoy the service. Good morning. So good to have you joining us here in the sanctuary, in the main floor, and all those of you up on the balcony. And welcome to those of you who are joining us in online church this morning. Uh, for those in online church, I just want to encourage you uh, to engage or comment uh, on the social media platforms that will just ha help us have more of a community connection. And one of the things that we've added now is that each week there will be a pastor in the tech booth actually participating in online church with you, so you can uh, connect with him there as well. Thank you for doing that. At the end of my talk today, we're going to host a live Q&A, and uh, if you have any questions, you can text them to 587-323-1199. Uh, or you can comment on social media, and we will pick it up from there. If you're here this morning in the, in the building and you don't have your uh, electronic device with you, you can write your question down and just bring it to the tech booth, and they'll enter it for you there. Thank you so much for that. For the past several weeks, we've been focusing on a study of Ephesians chapter 6, and if you remember, we began at verse 10. I just love this chapter, by the way. I love all of the Word of God, but this is such a practical chapter. And right now, we've really sensed this is what the Lord is really saying to us. He's highlighting this. And uh, verse 10 begins with, finally, be strong. Be strong. Not in yourself. Not in your own abilities. Not in all of those things, but be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. I don't know if you've thought of that. That's pretty incredible. That's a pretty incredible thing. When we are strong in the Lord's power, we are tying into the power of the one that is all-powerful, the most powerful one in the universe. So be strong in His power. And then uh, Paul goes on in verse 11, he says, Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the enemy's schemes, against the devil's schemes. Now, a scheme, I don't know what you think of when you think of scheme, but I think of a well-thought-out plot or plan. And you know, Satan and his demons have been dealing with human behavior and human nature for a very long time. They understand us. They understand our impulses, our inclinations, our weak areas. So based on their understanding of humanity and observing your own personal life patterns, if we do this, he or she'll do that, so forth, they have a scheme, a plan designed for your downfall and for your harm. And I think we need to take this really, really serious. And even every week, or every so often we hear of another uh, church leader falling or something like that. And you know, the enemy is wanting to take you out. Understand that. And if he can't take you out, what he will do, he will try to prevent you from reaching your full potential in God. And then Paul goes on, he reminds us, you know what, your struggle is not against your wife or it's not against your husband, or it's not against that person in the office, or it's not even against the uh, MLA that represents your area, or the neighbor across the street. It's not against flesh and blood, but it is against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly 
realms. Paul reminds us that we're in a real significant spiritual struggle. Our struggle is not with the seen. Our struggle is with the unseen spiritual realm. But you know, God doesn't leave us ill-equipped for this, and that's what we've been covering these last weeks. Paul says, therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you, not if it comes, but when it comes, when it comes, when that day of evil comes, you may be able, able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand. Now, Paul is not just referring to the fact that we live in a broken and a fallen world, which we do, and there will be evil on the earth until Jesus returns. That is true. But what Paul is referring to here is the fact that both corporately and individually and as families, there are going to be those times of significant, of intense spiritual attack. So to explain the armor of God, Paul uses a contemporary example of his day, the armor of a Roman soldier, as a metaphor to explain the spiritual armor that God has provided for us. Now to assist us again today, we have, uh, this time we've invited Officer John Doe from our local SWAT team, or tactical team as it's called in Canada, but SWAT something everybody un understands, uh, to join us. So thank you uh, for being here again. And he's just going to be here to, to give us a contemporary example of what the metaphor would look like in our world today, even as Paul was looking at a soldier when he was writing this and was under house arrest. And then Paul goes on. He says, stand firm then. With the belt of truth buckled, if you remember Pastor Bevan Mandy did a great job in that message, around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place, the breastplate of righteousness, as we looked at that a couple weeks ago, and then with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace which Pastor Doug covered so well last week. All four of the messages in this series are on our website or on our social media platforms. If you missed any of them, I encourage you just to go and uh, just catch up with this. But today, today we carry on and we continue with the next piece of armor, the next piece of armor, invincible protection. Invincible protection. Let's stand together, if you could please. I want to pray, and if you're uh, watching at home or somewhere else online, an online church, I encourage you to stand with us as well. I had a testimony of somebody uh, a few weeks ago that was out of town, and she described to me that even as she stood and participated in this prayer, the Holy Spirit touched her. So uh, let's just open our hearts. I'd like to symbolically encourage us to open our hands, just symbolically. So Lord Jesus, today... We stand with open hands, representing open hearts, hearts that are open to receive of your word, hearts for your spirit to do a work in and to speak into our lives. So God, take this word now and give us a personal and a practical application. And God, we are sensing that you're calling us to be strong in you, and Lord, you're calling us to a whole new level of spiritual warfare at this time on the earth. So God, anoint your people, touch your people. May, this, may we be empowered by your Spirit. May this word fall in good ground for your honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. So the verse that we're covering this morning is Ephesians 6, 16. Paul says, in addition to this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Now each part of the armor is critically important, as I've mentioned before, and they are all interdependent. Now sometimes people... Uh, suggests that as long as you have faith, you are fine. As long as you have faith, you are fine. Now, faith is really important. However, our faith has to be grounded in truth. 
Our faith has to be grounded in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. That's why Paul begins with, in addition to all this, Paul is saying, in addition to putting on the belt of truth, in addition to putting on the breast of, uh, plate of righteousness, in, di- in addition to putting on the shoes, the, your feet fitted with the readiness of the gospel of peace, in addition to that, Paul is saying, and he also could have used, uh, this also could have been interpreted a little bit differently here, the Greek wording also could have been interpreted out front, out front, or covering all, kind of out front like this SWAT shield is uh, with Officer John Doe here this morning. Paul is saying, in addition to all this, or out front, put on the shield of faith. And then in addition to this, Paul says, take up the shield of faith. Interesting words, take up. Uh, The word uh, take up that's translated from the Greek literally means to pick something up in hand or to pick something up again that you have laid down. So Paul is saying, pick it up again. You know, no Roman soldier would ever think of going into battle without his shield. Let me suggest that some of us here today And some of us in online church, we've laid down our shield. We've laid it down. So this morning, the Word of God would encourage us, in addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith. Now, there were two types of shields that were used by soldiers in Paul's day. And two different Greek words uh, describe each shield. One shield was smaller, it was round, was actually quite ornate, and that's probably what comes to most of our minds, a small, round shield. Now, this was primarily used for parades or for show. Now, while it looked really nice, this small, round shield, and was easy to handle, it was far from as effective as the shield that was used in battle. The Greek word that is used for shield here is the large shield that the Roman soldiers carried into battle. Now, this large shield was used way differently than the ceremonial shield, which was, was, can be moved around. Rather than being moved around to fend off attacks, it was actually planted in front of the soldier, planted right in front of the soldier, and he could crouch down behind it, and it covered much of his body as he crouched behind it. Sometimes because of the nature of this shield in military warfare, they actually referred to it as the door. It was said, you have to get by the door to get to the soldier. Isn't that amazing? Now what I want to encourage us with today, the practical personal application here, is we need to ensure that we don't just have a small, circular, ornate, nice-looking ceremonial shield. Kind of the shield that we take with us on Sunday morning, kind of looks nice, or maybe it looks nice when we meet in our small group, something that we kind of parade around with. We need to make sure this morning that we take the shield of faith, that we take the big shield of faith, the battlefield shield of faith. So Paul says, in addition To all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Now in warfare at that time, in that cultural context, there were two types of arrows used in warfare. One is the regular type of arrow that we would probably picture that would come to our mind similar to what we use now and would just be shot from a bow. Now, those arrows were effective for sure. However, the second type of arrow that was used in warfare uh, was the terror of the day. And Paul here is referring to the most dreaded and cunning weapon of his day, the flaming arrows. They came in quickly, and when they hit, they would be burning. And if they struck combustible material on the soldier's uniform or anywhere in the area where they hit, 
they would start a fire. You could say these arrows were kind of like the bombs of the ancient world. And you know, they were used actually very, very effectively against the Roman army. If you can picture the army kind of together in an encampment or in some type of fortified position, that is where those arrows would be shot in. The enemy would shoot a hail of flaming arrows into that fortified position, attempting to cause a major fire. And many times a major fire would happen and would cause much collateral damage. Here's the application part of this. And this is sobering. I want us to catch this. This is the type of arrow that Satan intends to shoot your way. When it comes, it is a flaming arrow. And when it hits, it's burning and it hits the vulnerable part of your mind, will, or emotions. And it can throw you into a state of rage or a state of anxiety or a state of jealousy or a state of unbelief or a state of worry or a state of intense temptation. These flaming arrows that Satan shoots are meant to do something horrendous in your life. They're not only meant to wound you when they hit, but they're also meant to inflame you with a fire that will burn out of control and a fire that will hurt the people that you love around you. See, the enemy has a scheme, a plot to take you out. That's why we need to have the shield of faith out front. Now, it's critically important that we take care that we take care of your shield of faith. We have to take care of it. See, the Roman soldier's shield was made of six layers of heavy leather. And it was very important that the soldier took care of it. Although that leather was extremely strong and extremely durable, that tough, thick leather, it could become stiff. And it could become brittle over time if not properly cared for. Now out on the battlefield, that would mean that if pressure, if pressure was suddenly put onto the onto the shield, that it would it could break, exposing the soldier to harm. And also brittle leather uh, would light on fire easier. So the soldier had to be proactive. The soldier had to take care of his shield. In order to take care of his shield, the soldier had a ritual every morning. He would take a vial of oil and he would put the oil on a cloth. And he would uh, let that oil saturate the cloth. And he would just wipe down that shield. And he'd apply the oil to it, to the leather, to make it soft and pliable. Now it was imperative for the soldier to do this. It was imperative for the soldier to pick up that vial and apply the oil to the shield every single day of his military life. That is, if he wanted to make it to retirement from his military service. You see, a casual approach to caring for the shield could result in the soldier becoming a casualty. Too many casualties on the battlefield of life today, folks. Now, because this shield is a representative of our faith, this analogy tells us that our faith needs regular anointing, filling, rubbing on the oil of the Holy Spirit. We need, desperately, need to pray daily for the infilling, the empowering of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And you know what? That infilling will keep our faith fresh, vibrant, and alive. That's what it takes. Tragically, many of us have allowed our faith to become stale, brittle, weathered, and then when that flaming arrow hits, our our shield breaks. It breaks. And the fire begins to burn, 
hurts our life, hurts the life of our family around us, hurts us. The other thing that the soldier would do before he went into war, he would take the shield and he would place his shield into water and he would just let it sit there until it was saturated. And then as he picked up that saturated shield and went into battle, when a flaming arrow hit that shield that was wet and saturated, it would extinguish them on impact. See, these saturated, water-saturated shields gave the Roman soldier the upper hand in battle by putting out the enemy's fire. In a similar way. In a similar way, We need to keep our shield of faith saturated, saturated with the washing of the water of the Word of God. Ephesians 5 and 26 says this, that he might sanctify and cleanse her. This is referring to the church. This is referring to the body of Christ. This is referring to us as Christ followers, as believers, that he that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by what? By the word. By the word. By the washing of water by the word. You see, our faith needs to be based on the solid reality of the word of God. See, living by faith is taking God at his word and acting on it, even when it makes no sense to those around us, and it's countercultural. So as we saturate our minds with the Word of God, believing it we rec- and receiving it, we read it, we hear it, we believe it, we receive it, and then we act on it. As we do that, we are maintaining our shield of faith. We're soaking it and having it ready for battle for when the enemy's arrows are shot at us. Romans ten seventeen says this in another way. Such an important verse. So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Before you can believe and act on what God has said, you need to know what he said. And the main way that you can know what God has said is by looking into his word, the Bible. It amazes me over and over how we, to hear people say, I'm living by faith, and to find out that we're never looking into the scriptures. We're actually a a Christian culture that in many ways has become biblically illiterate. We need to read the Bible. We need to study it. We need to keep watering our shield. See, without Scripture, our faith will become misguided, and our faith will be weak if we're not in the Word of God. See, word-saturated faith will extinguish the flaming arrows of the evil one. I cannot emphasize this enough. It is critical, critical that you saturate yourself with the Word of God every day, every day. And then Ephesians 6, 16, the last part of it says, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. The reference here is obvious, the evil one being Satan and his cohort, cohorts. The weapons described here are very typical of the weapons he prefers. You see, Satan loves covert operations. He is the prince of darkness, but he masquerades as an angel of light. So these fiery darts are the perfect weapon for Satan because he can shoot them from far off. They can come in quick and without warning, and they can cause great pain and great damage. They can be sent at one one at a time, or they can be sent in a hail of arrows. Flaming arrows. The only way 
that we can defend ourselves is by being ready with the shield of faith out front at all times. If we're always protected by the shield of faith, none of Satan's fiery arrows will be able to get to us. Praise his name. Doesn't matter if he sends them at night or by day, whether one at a time or hundreds of a, at a time. Whenever the arrows come, a word saturated, a well-oiled, well-maintained Holy Spirit shield of faith will be able to quench the, Satan's arrows, be able to quench them. And notice what it says. It doesn't say some. It says all. Isn't that exciting? All, all of his arrows, able to quench all of his arrows. The shield of faith literally is invincible protection. So take up the invincible protection, the shield of faith. Now there's incredible synergy. There's incredible power in fighting the enemy together. And we see this example in the Roman army when they would uh, take their shields and those shields actually had small little hinges, small little hinges on the sides of them and they would connect the shields. They'd literally connect the shields right in front of them and they would connect them together on top of them. And they had a massive wall of protection all around them. And then can you picture this? With these shields all connected, with this massive wall of protection, if you were the enemy, you would see a massive shield marching in your direction. Isn't that incredible? Massive wall marching in your direction. You know what? This is an incredible example. Incredible picture of what can happen for us as Christ followers, as a church, when we connect our shields of faith. As we said in the series that began to fall, we are stronger together. You know, unified believers are able to steadily and aggressively move forward, putting pressure on the enemy and thwarting all his strategies with the power of unified corporate faith. So I invite you, let's not let the enemy divide us. Let's not let him isolate us or separate us, but let's lock our shields of faith together as a, as a church community. Let's lock our shields together and let's move forward together in unison as we march against Satan's attack on our world today and on people today and on the church today and on families today. And as we do that, make sure that your shield of faith is in good shape. Make sure that it's freshly oiled, by the Holy Spirit, make sure that it's saturated in the Word of God. Because you know, when we're walking in unison and we're there with this brittle shield and the enemy shoots a shield, we don't live unto ourselves. We affect those around us and we're, we're walking with a brittle shield that hasn't been oiled by the Holy Spirit, a brittle shield that hasn't been drenched in the Word of God, uh, that isn't, it won't repel the arrow, that flaming arrow will hit and a fire will start and affect those around us as well. Let me say that even in this pandemic time, we can connect our shields of faith and we can advance in the kingdom against the enemy. How many of you believe that? Are you believing that? You know, you may be here this morning or you may be watching in online church today. And you'd have to honestly say, you know, I don't have a relationship with God. I don't have it. Well, let me say to you, that can start today. And that relationship actually begins with faith. And we read in Hebrews 11.6, we read in Hebrews 11.6, and it is impossible to please God without faith. 
You can't do it. You can't please God without faith. And anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. So if you're watching this or you're here today and you want to come to God, first of all, believe that he exists. Understand that as you are approaching him in faith, as you seek him in faith, he, re- he will reward you. And how do you seek him? Well, Romans 10, 9, and 10 explains this. It says, but if you confess, speak out, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You will be saved. So how does this work? Again, it's faith. For with the heart, one believes. Mind, will, and emotions. Today, as you decide to believe in Jesus and is justified, and with the mouth, one confesses and is saved. So as we come near our conclusion today, I want to lead us in a prayer. I'm going to invite you all here in the sanctuary to say this prayer together with me, and I'm going to invite you, all of those of you who are joining us today in online church, I invite you to pray with me. Let's pray together. Today, God, I come to you in faith. Today, God, I believe that you exist. And I believe that you took upon yourself the form of humanity, coming as Jesus, and you were born of a virgin. I believe that you allowed yourself to be crucified, and then you rose on the third day. I believe that. And today, I believe that you shed your blood for my sins. And by faith, I receive your forgiveness. And by faith, I yield my life to you. Thank you for coming into my life. Amen. If you prayed that prayer today uh, for the first time, uh, we want to just encourage you in your newfound faith journey. And coming up on the screen is a number for you to text if you can take out your cell phone and text LIFE to 587-323-1199. If you can text LIFE to that number. Uh, what will happen, a screen will come up on your phone. You can just simply enter some contact information. And that will allow us to connect you to an online booklet called Next Steps. Scripture that will help you and, uh, in your newfound faith journey. So thank you for doing that. And if you're here in the house today, uh, connect with me afterwards. I'd love to meet with you and also share uh, some information with you. God bless you for doing that. Secondly, um, I'll invite you all to stand for a moment, if you would, please. Also at home, if you would stand for a moment. Online church, standing as well. I want to pray a prayer over us a commissioning, a blessing prayer. So, Father, even as we stand, we're standing and we're saying we're standing strong in your mighty power. So, Calvary Community Church and all those in online church, stand strong in the mighty power of God. And today, I pray that you would take up the shield of faith. Take it up intentionally. Take it up. And I pray that you will examine your shield to ensure that it is in proper condition. And for those that are carrying shields today that are brittle and dry, I pray for a fresh touch of Holy Spirit anointing on your life. I pray for a fresh touch upon you, a renewal within your spirit in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit oil, just drench these shields. And then, God, I pray that we will be a people who will walk in the discipline of watering our shield, drenching our shield in the Word of God, 
So Calvary Community Church, I pray for an unquenchable thirst for the Word of God in your life. I pray that you will just need to read the Scripture. I pray that you will prioritize Scripture in your life and just be saturated by Scripture. And then I pray that you will connect your shield with other believers, even during this pandemic time. You will connect your shield. And I pray that together we will walk into our communities, into our city, and we will bring the kingdom of God, pushing back the darkness in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. So Calvary Community Church, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish the fiery flaming arrows of the evil one. Also coming up on your screen one more time, please, is the text questions number. Text questions to 587-323-1199. If you have any last-minute questions, please text them. Uh, this is going to conclude the uh, formal part of our service, but we invite you, as many of you as can, to stay here uh, both in-house and online church for the in-person q and a, which will happen uh, immediately. Thank you. God bless you. Thanks for joining us today. If you have any questions or if you need any assistance, don't hesitate to contact us. You can find more information on our website. And as always, you can join us on Sundays at 10 a.m. on Facebook, YouTube, or at the Watch Live button on our website. We'll see you next time.